The first one was that Papa Roach news. You guys see they're going to live stream the whole album process on Twitch. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I did see it. Uh, you you sent an article over on it. And, um, yeah, the whole premise is they're going to take over Twitch. And is it going to be like a 24-7 type of thing? Or just while they're in there, they'll live stream it? Is it in real time, I assume? I, I think the the album process stuff, yes. I don't know how if it's going to be like the real world where it's on 24-7. You know, five, four band members... Get, house. get COVID tested and then start <laughs> trying to make an album. <laughs> and yeah, he'll see what start getting real, that type of shit. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but I mean, when we were talking pre, Nate Nate was unsure of who and we, we couldn't find it in our quick quick Google search. Somebody else may have done something like this in the past, I'm sure. There's been plenty of bands that have done it in the moment and then released it later as a DVD, like St. Anger. Um, that was the one that Metallica did, right? The Some Kind of Monster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So th- there's been some people that have done something like this, but I like the idea of this, the in the moment live stream yeah in the like during the progress of the album i i'm trying to jog my memory i think earlier i said it's blink but now i'm thinking it might be uh angels and airwaves that had done that it that makes sense because uh yeah because tom had mod life um that was like a a live Ustream type platform back in the day so yeah if anyone knows hit us up because you know we want to think that this, this is kind of a, a first time event with papa roach but could have sworn this has been done before and we're nerds so the fact that we don't know off that is is challenging but <laughs> we'll figure it out <laughs> i get a i think maybe a little bit of a different take i hate this move i don't oh, like it really okay i don't like it so and where my head goes is and i know i always say that but for me to want to check this out like conceptually it would have to be a band i love so if i think of bands in that category I think of like Deftones. If Deftones did this, I feel like you'd pretty much, you would have heard the album before it comes out and it would have spoiled it. So like we talked about this earlier, Metallica, some kind of monster. Yep. It was all obviously, you know, pre-streaming for the, for the most part. And you saw it, like you saw the recipe, how it was made after you tasted it. But now it's like, what if I don't like some of those ingredients? You Good know? point, yeah. That... I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, I, my mind went to a couple of different bands, which I'll we'll talk about in just a minute. But yeah, that you may not like it. It may turn you off on wanting to either listen to it on its own, conceptually, or to purchase anything, um, you know, related to it when it comes out. So yeah, that I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, I love that. I think I'm I'm where you're at, and I'm actually thinking of two different things. A, there's one thing that happens when you're seeing a band that you admire or whatever and you see like their real personality and you're like oh, man these guys suck you know the Metallica. this guy's a dick yeah, yeah this yeah. guy's a dick or whatever but then there's the other side that's like you look at um you know photos of the album making process and so forth and you see like this uh marker board with like the track list and all these songs that didn't make the album so i'm like the cool part of that is you would see you would hear songs or see songs being produced that you're like oh that should have made the album that was the deep cut that should have made the made the cut so there's two sides of the coin, but ultimately I think I'm I'm with you, Twan, where it's like, ah, this is like a reality show. It never ends well. You know, there's always some kind of uh, aftermath that's, it's never positive with the reality thing, so. Yeah, I, now, <laughs> I'm waffling here, uh, obviously. I, I see both the not wanting to hear it or see the personality maybe of some of the band ma- members, but I also see like, yeah, it would have been cool to see how they turned the beginning of that song into a song that I end up loving, right? So that would be cool. Um, that's tough, though. I, I'm not sure if there's there's a right answer there. I guess it does depend on the band for me, too. And I, I do want to throw it to you guys because I got a couple in mind. But um, there are bands that obviously, like Twan said, Deftones, we would love to watch them do this. Is there anybody else that comes to mind for you, Nate, that you might want to watch have this ha- you know, happen? Like recording an album in real time? And st- on the Twitch stream, like you get to see everything. Oh, I actually, I don't. I wouldn't want to watch Deftones. That was my. You wouldn't, okay? But yeah. like, is there anybody that okay? That, say, that I would. Say you wouldn't worry about the not liking it. It's going to be an album that you're going to love. We'll just throw the, that hypothetical into this. Pick, give me a band that you would want to watch it. Like, uh, anybody that you love the album. Maybe go back in time. All right, this is kind of a funny one, and the reason I thought of them is because I have a poster in the room we're in is uh, Hatebreed. So, everyone criticizes Hatebreed because every riff sounds the same. I'd love to like. See, I think it's Shaw, uh, not Sean Martin anymore. It's uh, Frankie Three Guns, I think. One one of those dudes, the guitarist of the band. I'd love to see their like creative process where it's like, 
how did you come up with the same riff again? Yeah, it's like so <laughs> similar to the last one. And it's like, oh, I love that. Like, Jost is like, yeah, that's the one, you know? <laughs> that's awesome. So that'd be kind of fun. I got one if you're not ready, Nate. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of in Twan's headspace where it's like, I don't want to see it because I don't want it to tarnish, yeah. you know, what I like. But at the same time, you know, seeing the process for a band you may not like might be the one that I would, I would answer because it's like, oh, okay. I want to see how this process goes. And are they being, are their faces like, holy crap, like a disturbed album? Like, is that that riff or that, you know, growl that you did, yeah, that, David Draymond, yeah, like, yeah. that you really nailed right. it that time. I was going to do one, <laughs> but it's not going to sound good, so I won't. Um, okay, so I took it like this. How long was it between 10,000 Days and Fear Inoculum for Tool? Oh, yeah. If they were on camera for 14 years and we just had, like, Maynard crushing grapes with his feet and Danny <laughs> Carey just playing drums by himself in Cape Elizabeth, wouldn't that be kind of funny? <laughs> you had 14 years of this live stream because they thought they were going to have an album that maybe a year or two, and it just kept going and going and going. That would have been kind of crazy. That would be like the ultimate like National Geographic style <laughs> yeah, album right. process. Like, okay, this is hibernation. What was that movie that Richard Linklater came out with a few years ago, Bo- Boyhood, that the, he had he like grew up with the kids, so it took him 12 years to make. It'd oh, be wow. like that. Oh wow. Yeah, you could see like the aging process of the yeah, band yeah. members. Like they go on tour, but they're still like uh, people are like asking them because we saw him during this time a couple times. Yeah. And hey, where's the new music? Like, oh yeah, we're working on it. Check that. Check this Twitch. That would be interesting. That would it's like, tools a good one, because uh, yeah, I mean you would see firsthand like oh it's not a rumor like these guys literally hate each other unfortunately. Yeah, maybe yeah, or, or you know, they're just not together. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this empty studio space <laughs> with a live stream, <laughs> <laughs> collecting dust for two years. Yeah. Well, there's a band, well, A Day to Remember, they, on the album the album they put out like five or six years ago, there's a, there's, there's a track where like the first 10 seconds is a clip from them in the studio and it's the guitarist playing the riff that they end up going with in the song and it's the singer reacting saying, that's it. Nice. So like, that's kind of cool. You get those moments of like the creative process. But yeah, it reminds me of like the David Draymond thing where it's like, I don't want to hear like that dude try to hit the note six times you know what I mean? on the six try like you know, i think it would expose people yeah probably especially would. if it's real yeah. time yeah it probably would i mean that, that's what the bonus footage is on like certain albums where like they splice a few things at the end like bloopers or like making of the album or even making of the video for that matter which is like cool on our nerd level but it's very like you know picky choosy like you know we'll use this even if it is embarrassing because it's kind of a one-off but yeah to see the whole process yeah you you would probably see more bands break up like yeah fuck this shit yeah yeah and that happens a lot right i mean bands yeah. just get sick of each other and stop doing it there aren't a lot of bands still kicking around the way papa roach is doing it this this far into their career 20 yeah. something years 27 years or whatever um but i mean i, I can see that picking and choosing piece because when we make promo videos for for our instagram like we're just i'm cutting something that looks good right we're, we're right. finding a piece that sounds nice and not the stumbling blocks that we have while we're recording or whatever so <laughs> makes sense to me you know who I th- what genre would struggle with this is hip hop because you know like Eminem on Rap God that wasn't the first take and in yeah. fact that's not one continuous take you know that spliced and it would um I think it would devalue a lot of your favorite MCs because a lot of them just go in the booth maybe a few takes and then they're out I mm-hmm. mean no, there's obviously a lot of prep work with um you know, the flow and the lyrics and stuff, but once they have that, so it depends on wh- where the starting point would be. That's true. You know, another thing too is it would probably, unfortunately, highlight drugs and alcohol too much. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, yep, in the studio. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Scott yep. Weiland's coming in strung out. Like, nah, I don't know if I want to see that. Yeah. And we saw that firsthand too. So yeah. the Weiland stuff. Um, <clears throat> years, probably, geez, eight years ago now, right? Yeah. I think we talked about that a couple episodes back. But yeah, it, it would. You're right. It would probably trying to let on some of that so my thought here is then maybe it's not the 24 7 right it's got to be something along the lines of when they're in the studio and they feel like it's good yep. they'll they'll have you know let's all right turn the twitch on let's go as opposed to having it on the entire time yeah well that's just it not to mention the fact that when you're being recorded and you're aware of it no matter what you act differently it doesn't matter so like i'm trying to think oh we you know we've geeked out on different subjects here so legality wise like there's two-party states and non-two-party states and two-party states when you know you're being recorded you act differently it's just the way it is if you're not being if you don't know that you're being recorded like you're as candid as can be so the only way this would really work and have it be like 
very real is if they had no idea they were being recorded and you see this magic happen in real time. Otherwise, it's like it's going to be so some degree of yeah. And what if they said something, just the tiniest little bit of a joke that somebody got offended by? That's It's just such a double-edged sword. You can't yeah. do that, right? Yeah. But you're right. It'd be the only way that it would be real candid. Yeah. So no matter what, that's why that's why I brought up the uh, reality show thing. It's like it never ends well. People always get, you know, there's always some like massive PTSD for the people that are on the show, and um, it's just yeah, it's never an, a, a pretty picture. So I don't I don't know. I'm I'm with you, Twan. I don't know if I like this idea at all. It'd be one of those things too. Like I I feel like the producer world is like super secretive, and like you know Ross Robinson and um, who's the Beastie Boys guy. Ruben. 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 You yeah. know he doesn't want his shit out there, so it'd be certain producers that would even sign up for this. Yeah. Totally, they'd have to. Everybody would have to be on board and probably signing stuff beforehand. And yeah, yep. But for Papa Roach, like I don't know, I haven't followed them in a lot of years, but I assume they're past their prime. Like this is a good move for them. I feel like it's something different. Yeah, and they've been doing different stuff all year. I feel like um, just following them on Twitter, you see. They've re-recorded some stuff from from Infest, which turned twenty this year. They did a big live stream the weekend that it came out, back in August, early August maybe. I can't remember. It was fairly recently. Uh, that was cool. Um, I didn't. I watched a couple of snippets. I didn't pay for it, but I mean, they're they're just trying to stay viable in this this tough time. So coming up with different ideas and doing something, maybe not new, but trying something new for them. I'm Is cool this behind that. a paywall? Do we know? I don't know. Twitch is free. I think. Yeah. But I don't know. A lot of people mm. are on Twitch. A lot of people do Twitch. I don't understand it. It started as, a, what, a video game? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people would, it was just watching people play video games, which yeah. I never understood. And that's got to be a generational thing. We're just a little too old for that. But it's huge. And now people do all kinds of things. Although I do like watching mm. Tetris on YouTube. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Tetris is fun. I'm pretty good at Tetris, so. If there is a paywall, it'd be a, that'll even a change the dynamic once again. You know what I mean? There's a incentive behind the scenes. It's like a OnlyFans, you know, yeah. m- music production, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Twan, you like watching Tetris on YouTube. I'm just going to start live streaming on Twitch, I guess, when I play. See if people want to watch. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Couldn't hurt, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say Potty will say podcast every half an hour. <laughs> yeah, plug it. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I I mean, I don't, we don't think it's they're the first artist to do it, but I think in this era, in these times, it, it feels like they're the first to go down that path. With what's mm. going on right now, I would say, yeah, they're probably it. As far as we know, anyway, in our world, in the rock world. I wonder, are they piggybacking? Was the success of the live stream maybe kind of conducive to this, possibly? I don't know. Could be. You know, um, kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, it could be. They may have gotten a bigger pop from that than they thought, and they were like, let's let's put more online. Yeah. Stuff to think about. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just it it's telling of the times because you can you can't tour, and I've heard of like um, some underground shows in like New York that have like it's come out after the fact that shows have happened and there's been repercussions for venues and and bands and stuff like that. So you I mean you you can't play live. So this is you know outside of the live stream, this is another way to generate hype and demand. So I don't hate that angle of it, but eh. Let's be real. If Deftones did this, I'd probably watch. Oh, yeah. We'd all watch. 